guys, welcome to Thoughtful Thursday. Today we are talking about one of my favorite subjects, how to manage your time. Guys, if you can get this one skill down, you will be virtually unstoppable. Like literally, you can do anything if you're able to manage your time. One of my least favorite excuses in the entire world is the excuse that I don't have time. The reason it's my least favorite excuse is because people make time for what's important to them. Period. This past week, I worked my regular like my regular job, right? And then also worked 35 hours in my business. On average, I work about 20 hours a week on my business at a minimum. And that's on top of working 50 hours at work. So it's really just a matter of like, what are you choosing to dedicate your time to? So today we're going to talk about how to manage your time so that you can be as productive in the things that you want to do. Um, And hopefully you're actually applying these lessons so that you can see the progress and the results in your life. So let's get started. Step number one, you have to recognize how much time is available. Like really and truly think about how much time you have access to on a weekly basis. 168 hours. That's a lot of hours. And if you take away eight hours of sleep and you take away, you know, a 40 hour work week, you're still left with 72 hours. Like what are you doing with that time? And so I have a YouTube video called I Don't Have Time, and it really walks you through how to recognize how much time is left. But essentially, you start with that 168 hours, you take away work, you take away sleep, your commute, church, whatever your weekly commitments are, but things that are scheduled, like your weekly commitments that are in your schedule. Not things that you have to do, but just time constraints. So I have to be here from this time to this time, volunteer hours, whatever it is really start to subtract that number and honestly make it the worst case, the worst week possible. Let's see what that number looks like. The first time I did this, I put every excuse in the book, literally everything, six day work week, 72 hours a week. Um, you know, everything I could possibly think of the commute time, you know, hitting traffic, cheer practice when I was coaching, um, church, like literally every excuse I could possibly come up with. And I had 35 hours left. And at that point, I'm like, well, what am I doing with 35 hours? And that's on the worst week possible. You know, and that was including eight hours of sleep and everything like that. And so since then, I've made a decision that the minimum of sleep that I need is six. And really and truly, anywhere between six and eight hours is functional. But here's the thing. When I decide to go to sleep, I'm asleep. When I decide I'm waking up, I get up and I'm productive and functional. A lot of people spend, you know, one to two hours uh, waking up or one to two hours getting ready to go to sleep. Go to sleep or don't. Rest or don't. Work or don't. But this back and forth... It's not really productive on either account. You're not feeling rested. You're not feeling productive. You're just wasting your time. Step number two, get organized. Get organized. If you're having difficulty managing your time, my best recommendation is to get an hour by hour planner. And that's a great way to kickstart your time management process. So really put out everything that you have to do. Cook breakfast shower and get dressed, commute to work, commute home from work, you know, put, include your work time and what are you going to work on during your lunch break? Mm-hmm. Um, but really be strategic with your time and understand. So when you use what time you have left available after we just discovered that in step one, like what are you going to do with your time now that you know how much is really available to you? With that being said, getting that hour by hour planner really helps you evaluate like, how am I using my time? And that for me was a game changer. Like I don't use the hour by hour anymore, but again, it's a kickstart to get you used to managing your time effectively and really evaluating like, cool, I have 15 minutes. What am I going to do with that time? For example, I'm recording this video and I said, you know what? I have 15 minutes left 
before I have to get ready to leave for work. Like, let me go ahead and record while I'm while I have the time. It's really about using your time wisely. Step number three, you are going to place limits on your time. You have to be aware of the friends, family, relationships that suck up your time more than you expect or account for, right? So, you know, my family will consume every ounce of my time if I allow it to. I have learned to put limits on that. Like, cool, I'll hang out with them from this time to this time. After that, I got to go. I have a meeting, like whatever the case. And it's not even just a fluff excuse. Like, I really do be having stuff to do. Like, (laughs) I really do. And so, yes, it's about spending time with the people you enjoy. But I don't have a full day to just give away. I just don't. Like, even the day of my sister's graduation, that was an all-day affair. I was up the morning of getting work done. Like, I cannot afford to take a day off of my business. There are people and lives that I am irresponsible for impacting. I can't afford to take a day off. I just can't. And I don't choose to because I found what I was created to do. So definitely start putting limits on your time, particularly if you notice a particular person starts to monopolize your time uh, without you having like control over that. So, you know, visit them before a meeting or visit them before, you know, a phone call or whatever the case. But however you need to place limits on your time, do so. Time is like money. If you don't have a plan for your time or a plan for your money, other people will spend it for you. It's just what it is. Um, step number four, understand you can have it all, but one thing at a time. So there's this idea that you can't have it all. Yeah, you can. You have to define what having it all looks like for you. And I have a video for that as well. Um, but the the gist of that concept is understanding that Yes, I can absolutely have it all. I just have to work on building one level at a time. Can I do it all at once? Probably not. However, I can build as I grow. I can have that as my idea, my forefront, and my plan. Cool. No problem at all. Um, So one thing that has helped me in that area, and I got this tip from Lisa Nichols, um, but how we a lot of times we have like deadlines for when we want to accomplish things. But she also recommended having deadlines for when you're going to start a project. And that was definitely a game changer because it did not, it no longer clogs my mind the different things that I want to do. Like, I come up with this fabulous idea, excellent. You do a brain dump, get all of the ideas off your chest, but then you schedule it so that you're no longer, like, obsessed with it. And I look you know, it's on a month by month basis. Every month I'll sit down like, cool, what projects am I starting this month? What projects am I supposed to be finished with this month? And it really alleviates the pressure to get everything done right away. So understand you can have it all, but you got to go one level at a time. Uh, Step number five, prioritize your time. Understand what's necessary, understand what's a priority, understand what needs to come first in what order. For example, the fact that I do self-care Sunday, motivational Monday, thoughtful Thursday, you can bet your eyes a priority is making sure that they're recorded and edited prior to those days. Like even if that means I have a long night, even if that means I have an early morning, whatever the case. I have to be really strategic with prioritizing what tasks go ahead. Um, I'm working on my master's. So my homework assignments have to take priority. Like the plan is to get those done as early in the week as possible so that I can be productive in those in, in my classes. But it's all about managing your time and making sure that you have priorities in line for knowing what's what's what. And finally, I have a bonus step. This is probably my favorite. I'm going to put this as my favorite. Absolutely. Bonus. Make sure you schedule your fun. Schedule your days of rest. I aim for one day a week where I do absolutely nothing out of obligation. And uh, schedule, like I schedule my massages. I schedule in getting my nail and hair done, uh, hair and nails done. I schedule 
going out for drinks. I schedule like going to dinner with a friend, whatever the case. Um, and I will even schedule, put in my schedule. I'm not doing anything on this day. That's usually my day of rest. I aim for that to be on Sundays, but it's really helpful because it reminds you that your self-care is important. Yes, you want to manage your time, but the biggest benefit to managing your time is so that you have time to rest and that you can rest without any guilt associated because all your work got done. Cool. Let's do a quick little recap. Step number one, you want to recognize how much time you actually have available. Step number two, you want to get organized. Step number three, you want to place limits on your time. Step number four, recognize you can have it all, just one thing at a time. Step number five, you want to prioritize your time. And bonus, schedule your fun. So make sure you put in the comments which step was your favorite, which one are you needing the most help with. Um, I'd be happy to help you if you're need if you struggling in this area. But most importantly, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you like these videos, if you like the content, hit subscribe. Why not? All right. Thanks, guys.